All right, so the next part of this video is all about sourcing this into Axiom. Yeah. So we got all that. Boom. Boom. Let's have a look at our little thing as well. Boom. 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 Cool. Um, right. So obviously, this is a huge area, the sim. It's not exactly optimized if you just bring the whole thing into Axiom. So we do some post process just to get this simmed um, more in a more optimized manner. So all I've done is create this clip node um, set to a distance of negative 0.5. And the direction is 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 in X and Z. That's because my camera is sitting on uh, along that direction. So, right. And then I just um, create a reference copy of that. And, but in here, I'm just going to multiply this with negative 1. Oops, sorry. I'm just gonna um, set the direction or this thing, the keep um, primitives below the plane. That way, we're just doing the invert of whatever we set here. So if you have a look, it's that there, 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 there. And cool. Um, one thing I want to say though is that on this guy, I've added a padding. There's an, a little overlap, so if you just merge these two together and color them differently, zero, zero, zero. Here, these are equal to two. So with a little bit of overlap, that's two there. You can, um, points are sitting on the same place, but if you just add a little bit of chitter here on one of these guys, just a little bit. So without the padding, so we have a clean cut between the two um, sides but with some padding on will provide some overlap onto the sim this is so that i just want to make sure that there's no obvious split between two sims um, and if we eventually I, I just rendered these out separately but eventually if you want to merge them back together we can just put on a vdb combine and set the combination operation to maximum and that should work hopefully <laughs> right wait and wait so this switch just switch between those two sides obviously with the overlap and then here i'm just remapping my mask fall off and setting that to be called density. So now we have density. Without this, we don't have any density because there just there's no density attribute on our pop sim. Uh, we're creating that with the attribute remap. And after this, all they want to do is multiply the density with the normalized age. You see, boom. Boom. The reason why I'm setting the mask fall off as our initial density is because I don't want a lot of the smoke to come. I don't want a uniform density throughout this um, kick up. I just want most of the density to be closer from, to the impact point. And as it gets further away to the impact point, obviously we just give it less density. So that's that. And then 
I did some multiplication for one of the things here. Um, this is just so that because I didn't want a lot of the smoke in one of these areas, like here. So I'm just, oh, sorry, I, it seems like I <laughs> wanted more smoke in this area. Um, cool. So all I did here is just find the, the point position of this sphere. And then finding the distance, computing the distance between the point on this input and the, dis the, the point on this sphere. <laughs> And fitting that between some min and max. Perfect. Awesome. So I'm just rasterizing all these particles. Mm. All right. There you go. And this rasterized node that I created, the HDA, has some additional noise that you can set. Um, I've also added copy the density to temperature and density to the divergence. So without this node, um, all we can do is do a volume rasterize attributes and rasterize the density, obviously, and the V. Now, if we have a look at this volume rasterize attributes, um, let's not set v to be visible um just density there you go. and let's lower the particle scale a bit, a bit a bit more maybe something like that and then adding some velocity blur okay remove the coverage attributes normalize by clamp coverage Oh, cool. If you raise the shutter, we can kind of sense that we're advecting the particle some more based on the velocities. And what we want to do to break this up is we can create an attribute adjust float and set this to be density and multiply or add, depends on what you want. Um, let's just say add for now and add it with some noise and the min and max is zero and one so we add it for zero and one and if we just plug that before the rasterize now we can see how that changes the look of our sim cool sorry the source um, nice we can set this to be round i guess and then maybe add a little bit more. It's fine. It would be cool to have some more roughness in our noise as well. Perfect. So that's how we add some noise to our density. And so in here, I copied density to temperature and density to divergence. So the way I did this, since we're only rasterizing density and V, we only have those as the fields. Um, we can just isolate, delete non-selected or density here, and renaming that to temperature, and then to pressure as for the divergence. Merge them together and merge she's back here together. Oops. So now we have density, V, temperature, and pressure. Cool. So that's pretty much what this quick rasterizer node is doing. And we've got the visibility node as well, just to hide the velocity and the volume sharpen obviously and so we just fire a big volume put down the sharpen volume and plug that there cool uh, let's hide everything all 
of these and sharpen. Awesome. Very, very cool. Right. Um, so this is set to 0 0.05. 0 0.05 and we should probably lower the P scale as well 0 0.1 let's try that 0 0.2 and one's fine great nice so this will this setup will run through both sides um, and which is a good thing we just plug all these here, boom, 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 and that should be our switch. We cash those out, and then we have our switch, which is connected to this guy. So we just put this here, and this will run automatically for us. We shouldn't have to set this different um, offsets to our noise for both sides, since we want to keep the same, um, um, we shouldn't have any disconnect between these two sides. Um, so we have to make sure that our um, noises and things like that don't offset when we change. Awesome. And yeah, obviously we have to bring back our collisions here. And that's it really. And the Axiom Solver is nothing too fancy again. It's just um, setting up the normal um, settings for creating a nice looking smoke sim. So if you have a look at our cache here. Cool. And it's not even that high res. It's just a thousand, a million and 700k voxels for one side, which is good. We don't really need to make it too high resolution um, as you can see on the sim it's very very faint we just need to, to sense that little dust particulates in the assets get kicked up when the shockwave happens boom yeah cool so there's that's that for the dust kick up you guys learned something new and enjoy.